It's called the New You Challenge. So I went to check it out at the local CrossFit gym and I thought there's no way I can do this. There's no way my body can do this. It was an all women class and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go for it. If I don't feel that my scars define me as a person, uh, if anything, it's something that is a reminder of how far I've come Good. and how strong I am today. Go. All survivors that have had to go through countless surgeries would relate. It's amazing what your body can go through and bounce back. My name is Aubrey Morgart. I was diagnosed with breast cancer. August 31st, 2013 was my wedding day. We had just gotten back from our honeymoon when I found the lump in my breast. I was a new mom, I was a new wife, and we were newlyweds, you know. This is supposed to be an exciting time in our life. Not hearing that I had stage three breast cancer. So we're not quite sure what causes breast cancer. We obviously have some hints. We know breast cancer is usually a, a, a disease that's related to estrogen, uh, so it requires estrogen to grow. But on the other hand, uh, about 40% of the patients that we see with breast cancer have no particular risk factors that we have identified. we can now test and identify genetic mutations in the patient. For example, the BRCA mutation, as we well known, but nowadays we have identified several others that actually increase your risk for breast cancer. Also, patients that have no children, they're at elevated risk, or patients that have the first child over the age of 35. So a late pregnancy even puts you in a higher category than if you don't have children at all. So any family history is important to know, and oftentimes people think that it's just their mom's family history, but actually the paternal family history or the dad's family history is just as important because the genes that are responsible for some hereditary breast cancers can be inherited from the mother or from the father. My mom was diagnosed with breast cancer, but for some reason I didn't even think that that would happen to me. Typically when patients are diagnosed with breast cancer, they'll feel something or they'll have imaging that's abnormal. Other symptoms of breast cancer can be uh, a deformity in the breast. Sometimes the breast is start pulling or inversion of the nipple or the nipple uh, gets uh, you know, flat or inverted. Or sometimes we may see nipple discharge. And I tell my patients, doing cell breast examination makes you aware of your breast and how it feels. So any change can lead you to seek help. So most of the breast cancers, we like to really diagnose them in an asymptomatic stage. We like to diagnose them by the patient going and getting a mammogram. And the whole idea behind mammography is you want to find breast cancer before you can see it and before you can feel it. Mammography should be done annually. The guidelines vary a little bit nowadays, but usually we say over the age of 40, for sure over the age of 50. I remember looking at the surgeon that had done my biopsy and I said to him, I said, you know, I said, you gotta tell me what I, what I need to do. You know, I told him, I said, I have a two-year-old, so whatever I have to do to get rid of this and move on, that's what, that's what I need to do. What's really important about breast cancer is understanding that it's not one disease. The question is, well, what type of breast cancer do you have? There's three major subtypes. There's breast cancers that are hormone driven, and we consider those ER estrogen receptor or PR progesterone receptor positive. There are cancers that are HER2 positive. Some HER2 positive cancers are also estrogen positive. Some are estrogen negative. And then there's another major type, which is called triple negative, and that's when a tumor is negative for estrogen and progesterone and HER2. Those all greatly impact prognosis. 
about 20% of breast cancers are HER2 positive, which is what Aubrey had. Historically, HER2 positive cancers were more aggressive and have worse outcomes. You know, it's scary because I'm only 37. When ladies are first diagnosed and you hear the word cancer, you think, I'm gonna die. You know, what, what's gonna happen with this? And then you'll meet with your doctors and they'll lay out a treatment plan. And then you start to have hope that you can do well. So what happens is we figure out exactly what type it is. So the estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor, HER2. We do what's called staging. So that's an idea of how big the tumor is. Are there lymph nodes involved or not? Has the cancer already spread? Usually stage one and stage two is considered early. Cancer is limited to the breast or maybe into lymph nodes in the armpit. Late stage patients are stage three patients who still have disease in the breast and nodes, but limited to the area. And of course, stage four patients are patients that have disease spread outside of the breast or lymph nodes, which we call metastatic breast cancer. I started treating Aubrey back when she was diagnosed in 2013. We were dealing with a large tumor in the breast. We were dealing with lymph nodes that were involved, but no spread outside to other places in the body. The way we approach breast cancer patients, in a typical way, we do surgery first to remove the tumor, either with a lumpectomy or mastectomy. We check a couple of the lymph nodes, and then we give what we call adjuvant therapy. Adjuvant or adjunct therapy is systemic therapy uh, that is given either intravenously or orally uh, to the patient to actually reach cancer cells that have escaped the surgical field. For her to pose the patients though, we like to give the systemic therapy first and do surgery later. The treatment is tough but it works very well. And I tell patients this is one of the most difficult therapies we have to go through. And what we're hoping is that at the end of all of that chemotherapy, there will be no cancer left. And we call that a pathologic complete response. So that's our goal when we're giving treatment prior to surgery to have all of it gone by the time the therapy is done. This is before treatment and this is after treatment. So in Aubrey's situation, the tumor responded very, very well, but not entirely. So there was still some microscopic cancer that was in the breast tissue. So while she had a great response, there was still some cancer left. So we had to figure out what we were gonna do about that. I met with the breast surgeon and I remember, you know, him saying, okay, we are gonna take the left breast first and then you'll go through radiation. Uh, and then after radiation, we'll talk about mastectomy on your right side and reconstructive surgery. And I just remember thinking, okay, that's the plan. That's what we're gonna do. I think my friend was actually a little more shocked than what I was. And you know, she said, you know, what are your thoughts? Is that what you expected to hear? And I said, this is part of the plan. This is part of what I need to do. And I'm okay with it. It was more about, you know, being alive than whether I had breasts or not. I was more um, upset about my hair coming out than I was the fact that I had to have a mastectomy. My biggest thing was that I wanted to keep normalcy for our daughter. I didn't want this to take over our lives. I wanted, you know, her to have her normal day-to-day -day routine, you know, and being strong for her was the biggest part of what kept me going. Breast cancer affects women who are uh, pretty much the pillar of the family and creates a lot of disruption in taking care of children and, and getting the family going. When it came time to think about reconstruction, it was put into perspective the fact how young I was and that, you know, I might live, you know, 50, 60 more years without breasts. And then when I thought about it that way, I thought, well, you know, maybe we should do something. My mom, she chose not to have any reconstruction and I, I think that she would stand by that choice at this point. I honestly don't know why I decided to be so proactive in the community. I think I wanted to really 
shed light on the fact that even young women can be diagnosed. This is not the end of the world. It's not something that is going to define who you are as a person. So it has been five years um, that I have not had any <laughs> chemotherapy, um, hormone treatment, anything like that. Yeah, five years since I've had anything in my body. Um, and I'm cancer free. It's important because with her type of cancer, the estrogen negative, HER2 positive, the first five years are what we worry most about. So to be able to reach that milestone and to not have a recurrence, we're definitely feeling hopeful and optimistic that she will continue to do well long term. You make mommy work. The progress in breast cancer and other cancers as well is accelerating dramatically in the last few years. Because of technology, we identify targets, we develop drugs very quickly, and we have made progress. Uh, people ask, uh, are we close to curing breast cancer? And we are. Uh, it may not be cure for all breast cancers, but it may be a subtype that we're getting closer to the cure. But sometimes one development can be a significant game changer that we didn't have a few years ago. So there's always hope, and the hope is that we now are accelerating the pace of discovery. The survival rate is much better specifically for subsets of breast cancer like HER2 positive breast cancer. So we're really making progress all the time and these treatments are really translating into better outcomes for our patients. There's no reason to think that that survival rate won't be 100% in my career. We just take it one day at a time and we are absolutely enjoying every minute that we have. I finally feel like I'm me again scars and all.